Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we bring you the latest news, insight and analysis. Today I'm going to talk about the Europeans, particularly the EU and Russian gas. It's a love and hate relationship here. They say they don't want it but they continue to buy it. Let's look into the whole crazy world of the EU gas market. What the EU spends on gas imports is three to four times higher than the cost of uh, energy in the United States and China. This imbalance completely undermines the competitiveness of European industry on the world market. This is according to the deputy head of the European Commission, Maros Sefcovic. who spoke at a press conference following the informal meeting of the EU energy ministers. According to him, if you compare gas prices in the EU with prices in China and the USA, they are, prices are three to four times lower. According to Sefcovic, Europe is going through extremely difficult times. The subsidies they're paying out for industry and citizens so they can heat their homes and hopefully power their businesses have reached over 1 trillion euros per year, he added. I mean, Let's look at it logically. I mean, what did he think would happen when you cut off access to cheap energy via pipelines from Russia? Not free the EU, but freeze the EU. Anyway, after the start of the uh, Russian conflict with the Ukraine in 2022, the EU countries decided to, for purely political reasons, to significantly reduce their uh, purchases of Russian pipeline gas. Now, Washington quickly took advantage of the situation and offered its LNG to the Europeans at a much significantly higher price through delivering uh, its LNG across the ocean in tankers. That meant the construction of more LNG gasification terminals as opposed to simple take it straight from the pipeline. However, this has not stopped some countries of the EU still buying Russian pipeline gas supplies via the Ukraine transit system in the amount of 40 million cubic metres per day. And these are mainly Austria, the Czech Republic and Slovakia. Russian gas in the volume of 35 million cubic metres per day still flows through the Turkstream pipeline and that goes to the countries of southern and eastern Europe including Hungary, Greece, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Romania and Serbia. In the first three months of 2024, the EU countries increased their imports of Russian gas even further. They were up by 17%. So the pipeline gas flow continues despite the shutdown of the Umal Europe pipeline and the destruction of the Nord Stream pipelines. Now, <clears throat> when it comes to uh, Russian LNG, then the EU claims look even more hollow. According to at uh, S&P Global, their data suggests that the EU's dependence on Russian gas imports has only grown over the last year. In the first quarter of 2024, Russia supplied 4.9 million tonnes of LNG to Europe, which is more than 16% of the total supply of this type of fuel. Their total import was actually 33.65 million tonnes. This is up from 12.74% uh, uh, in the first four months of uh, 2023. Now, the majority of Russian LNG supplies were received by three European countries. These are France, Spain and Belgium. For Spain, the share of Russian LNG amounted to 32% of its total import volume of 1.56 million tonnes of LNG. Share of Russian LNG in total imports in Belgium and France was 49% uh, and 27% uh, respectively. In Spain, they point out that the average uh, that the government cannot break the contracts of private companies. These are the private uh, gas and whatever the utilities. You know what I mean. From October 2023 to March 2024, Russian LNG supplies to uh, Spain amounted to 2.57 million tonnes compared to only 2.28 million tonnes for the same period the previous year. Now this according to S&P Global data. Now on to France. Now although the French President Emmanuel Macron has positioned himself as one of Ukraine's strongest defenders and uh, Russia's opponent, 
France has actually increased its purchases of Russian LNG more than any other European country. According to uh, Politico, uh, and it relies on data and analysis from the Centre for uh, Research on Energy and Clean Air. In Q1 2024, France paid Russia over 600 million euros for gas supplies. Now, this has led to criticism and calls for Paris to reduce uh, its purchase of Russian gas. However, France maintains that gas purchases are necessary to support its households, and not just there, but across Europe. And anyway, they have long-term agreements with Russia that are legally binding, which is quite funny when you consider that uh, other contracts with Russia, with companies in the EU, etc., have all been broken. I mean, the French president may be opposed to importing uh, a Russian LNG, but it's not prohibited uh, either at EU or at an individual state level. Therefore, commercial companies have the right to import LNG from Russia. Now, these companies are obviously trying to protect their businesses, but not to mention their also their images by providing uh, energy supplies to the consumer. This alternative to Russian gas would be much more expensive. According to Igor Yushkov, who's a professor at the Russian Financial University and he's a member of the uh, Russian National Energy Security Fund, the French reliance on uh, Russian LNG is significant, but that's mainly due to their long-standing cooperation with Russia in this area. I mean, Total Energy, which is a what, the largest French uh, energy company, still holds a stake of 19.9% in Novatec, and that's the flagship project is the Jamal LNG. And it's not terminated the agreements for LNG supply uh, from the project, so um, it might have said it was going to leave the project, but it hasn't terminated the contracts. And Yamal is actually the primary source of Russian LNG in Europe. I mean, the reason that Russian LNG is mainly exported to France, Belgium and Spain is the fact that they all have coastlines. I mean, Yamal uh, LNG is supplied, supplied by Arctic tankers of Arctic 7 class, which are, they only built 15 of them, but they're specifically built for the LNG project in Yamal, and they are ice class. So according to uh, Yushkov, European ports are utilised for the transshipping of the LNG into more conventional ta tankers. This allows the uh, tankers to uh, promptly go back, get a new batch of LNG, and uh, then uh, sell more uh, gas. Now, the French Ministry of the Economy attributes the rise in LNG imports from Russia to strikes last year that disrupted uh, the normal flows of gas. France also exports this gas to other countries, it says, including Italy. Now, not all Russian gas, uh, LNG gas, that arrives at the ports of France, Belgium and Spain is regasified and then sent onto the European market. Part of the LNG is reloaded onto the non-Arctic class uh, tankers at ports and can go anywhere. I mean, if the gas has been bought, it can then be distributed around the world to uh, Asia uh, and various other places. Furthermore, even after the regasification of uh, LNG in, in Belgium, France and Spain, it's not going to necessarily uh, be used by them. They, they can transport it through the gas transport system uh, that covers the whole of Europe. It actually goes all the way. In fact, uh, Nord Stream uh, used to fill uh, into Germany, but it went into the Opal pipeline that crosses Germany. It also has spurs that go into France uh, and all the way down to Austria. So, you know, there's a trans uh, European gas pipeline system that's easily utilized by countries who've got uh, LNG and they can shift it from one country to another quite easily. I mean, I mean, although Belgium gets a fair bit of uh, a Russian and non-Russian LNG, it's a, a lot of it sent to Germany after it's been regasified and goes through the pipeline. So 
Germany, you know, is still buying Russian LNG and it's replaced some of its lost pipeline gas from Nord Stream with it. However, since it's transported through Belgium, it's recorded in the EU statistics as uh, supplies through Belgium. Now, why are European countries turning to Russian LNG? Well, because American LNG is increasingly, because of price, being exported to the Asian markets. This leaves more room for Russian LNG, and the same for Spain, uh, where Russian pipeline gas never ever got there. So as a result, Spain's been relying on LNG for a long time, and it feels the impact of LNG going to Asia. Additionally, sometimes, although Spain gets uh, pipeline gas supplies from uh, Algeria, they're not always that reliable. So from an economic standpoint, buying Russian gas is beneficial and convenient for both parties. As for the Yamal uh, LNG product project, it's more profitable for them to transport gas to Europe when Asia uh, prices are the same because of the cost of transportation. It's a shorter distance and it allows the tankers to drop off, go back and bring some more back. Additionally, from uh, November to June, navigation in the eastern part of the Northern Sea Route is pretty difficult. So uh, if gas is sent to Asia, it would have to come round Europe. So uh, Suez Canal problems there, Red Sea problems there. So selling it to Europe is easier and uh, more convenient. So it benefits the Europeans and it benefits uh, the Russians too. Now, according to uh, Yushkov, the EU is discussing imposing a ban on Russian LNG and, and Russian pipeline gas, but it's been on discussion for a long time. And every time they look at it, they realise that, hang on a minute, this isn't going to work for us. So, you know, they basically, if they did try and stop the transshipment and regasification of uh, Russian LNG, uh, it would ne negatively impact the gas market and cause prices to go even higher. Anyway, <clears throat> so if they did that, uh, Europeans would have to try very hard to purchase more American or Qatari LNG. But then they're competing with Asian buyers and of course this increases the, the price of gas. I mean, the market recently has stabilized in Europe around $300, uh, $300 per thousand cubic meters. And I mean, we had in 2022 uh, a jump in prices to five, six, seven, eight hundred uh, dollars per thousand cubic meters. And that would have an even more devastating impact on the economies of Europe. So the impact of that obviously is inflation, which will just accelerate the deindustrialization of Europe which, and gas consumption will drop even further. However, Yushkov doubts that the EU will impose them as I do in the next package of sanctions, which I think is likely to be the 14th, uh, 13 failures in a row, so let's try another one. But the, as the heating season approaches in October, uh, if Europe's had a cool summer, there'll be no need for uh, gas to power air conditioning, etc. So they still have a reasonable level of, uh, of gas in their storages. But this could lead to increased confidence. And then, uh, of course, uh, the usual failures would happen. But I don't see any of that happening anyway. So a ban on Russian LNG is unlikely. EU falling out with uh, Russian gas will continue to just be rhetoric anyway. I hope you've enjoyed this video and um, all the information that I've based this article, uh, sorry, this uh, video on are available on the website. So please do uh, go to the website, SEO Bricks Insight, and uh, have a good look and uh, read in detail uh, what I've been writing, me and others, uh, on the, the SEObricks.com insight. And uh, I look forward to being with you. Now do like and subscribe. Those of you who have subscribed, please continue to comment and I'll try and get back to as many of you as possible. Thank you for your kind remarks in the comments anyway and I'll be with you all again soon. Thank you.